Okay, well, my, the motivation for my proposal, as you can see in my paper, is the proposal is called sort of a proposal for establishing industrial regulatory boards. And they would be in the model of public utility commissions. And the interesting thing about public utility commissions that most people don't realize is that they actually have to approve all major investments that utilities make. And the reason I think this is interesting, of course, is because I, I'm assuming in this paper, in this proposal, that capital markets and private corporations working within capital markets are not likely to be able to properly allocate nearly enough capital to achieve sustainable development in the long run or short run. And uh, therefore, if, if we can't trust capital markets and private corporations to invest enough sustainably, uh, we have to uh, have another approach to how to allocate and approve investments in sustainable development-related uh, activities. Now, the other thing about this proposal is it, it's based on reacting to the initiative, the uh, private investment initiatives of corporations. So we're not talking about central planning here in terms of directing investment outside of the corporate world. We're saying that corporations would need to have the investments that they propose making approved by these industrial regulatory boards. And the key thing there is that uh, the boards react to proposals just like public utility commissions do. The, so the, in other words, this is a form, of, a form of managed capitalism. It's a setting up a regulatory approach for managing capitalism. The proposal also assumes that investment decisions made by private corporations cannot really be considered democratic. There's no real democratic oversight in the current system because basically these investments are made by the boards and only approved by the boards of directors of private corporations. And I would not consider that sufficiently democratic, particularly since in most private corporations, not even the workers in the company itself get to approve investments or have a say in them. How are we doing on static, by the way? Good. Uh, okay. Just a little bit. Yeah, yeah, okay. I'll continue. So the, the, the main thesis of the proposal is how to establish democratic input into how capital is invested in society. Now, again, this, this would be f based on proposals from private corporations and perhaps public corporations and government as well. So... We need a democratic decision-making process. And the justification, of course, as I said, is to achieve sustainable development, but particularly it's justified to have this kind of, of democratic oversight because basically investments in plant and facility and offices and housing that are made from this time forward will, depend, will determine whether we get to sustainable development. So all major investments have both environmental and social implications that can be very profound, and that's what we need oversight over. We have to try to achieve the public interest, just like public utility commissions are um, mandated by law to achieve. Now, um, I'm not even sure there's been a proposal like this made recently, but I'm not aware of one if one has been, so I'm interested in any feedback from people on that matter. Th this proposal is also based on the concept of subsidiarity, namely industrial regulatory boards would have to be set up for each specific industry uh, at an appropriate regional or local basis, um, you know, and that would tend to vary by industry. That, that sort of has to be determined by the facts of the situation for each industry. These boards would have multiple stakeholders participating. So this is the way that civil society could play a much more equal role to government and to private corporations and public corporations. Multiple stakeholders would play a role because just like with public utility commissions, they would be entitled to paid participation and hiring of experts 
to present alternative proposals to the investment proposals that a corporation makes. So, for example, in the 1980s, I was often hired by uh, consumer advocates at the state level if a uh, coal or nuclear power plant was proposed to see what could be done perhaps that would be better environmentally and socially than investing in those large power plants. And so we had a look at conservation, renewables, all sorts of alternatives, and that could be done in each industry. Um, the other advantage of this proposal to review these investments is that this whole um, system would run under administrative legal proceedings, which means that each party gets discovery rights, and therefore there's a lot of transparency that's suddenly brought to the table because most all the information on the investments, the motivation for the investments, how the investment would be carried out, what kind of products and services would result, would be all subject to discovery, and again, all information could be uh, public in theory. The other aspect of the legal process, administrative law, is that decisions made by these boards, like uh, PUCs, are subject to appeal to the courts. So if there are legal problems um, with the way the board has decided, uh, this is, becomes appealable. The judges, again, are, are commissioners or board members, you know, perhaps three to five people, as usual, to, to make these decisions on an investment-specific, industry-specific basis. Um, the reason I think these boards have to be uh, industry-specific and perhaps even sub-industry-specific is because the board members, the commissioners, the staff of these boards would have to acquire uh, a, a large amount of expertise in the area in which they have to make decisions, and uh, that would require a lot of specialization. The other, Another aspect of this process is that you, you would, of course, have a specific time frame for a decision. So you, you're not going to be in a situation where the corporation is waiting for, for years for a decision. Hopefully decisions could be made in the course of, say, 6 uh, to 12 months, as is often the case with uh, public utility commissions. And uh, I would argue that this form of regulation, even though it sounds very intensive, is highly cost-effective because it involves a process of social learning. Um, you know, my experience with public utility commissions, once we actually were able to raise issues about energy conservation, renewables, and what have you as alternative to power plant investments, um, but all parties involved in the case, all stakeholders, environmental groups, or whoever, learned a lot from the process, and the uh, outcome, I th think, benefited tremendously. So I think, you know, if, if, if regulation, for example, costs, as much as 1% of a proposed investment, which would actually be a lot, you'll probably end up saving many percentage of, of the um, proposed investment by the social learning process involved and alternatives that could be far cheaper and more environmentally beneficial could result from this kind of process. So I think, you know, contrary to what most economists would say, regulation in general can be extremely cost-effective. Um, with a high return on the cost of the regulatory process. In addition, if there are industries where market power is still is a major concern because the industries and the products they're making are not that competitive, which is more the case, I think, than most economists would admit to, then these boards could also deal with the issue of pricing products and services and to what extent they are competitive or not, and if they're not competitive, what kind of return should be allowed on the investments. So in general, um, when you make investments, of course, you're, that leads to products and services. So not only the prices of the products and services should be uh, regulated and adjudicated in this kind of process, but also the products and services themselves. Uh, the boards would have to decide, are these products uh, harmful to society or not? Are they safe or not? Are they a good addition to the range of products and services already uh, created in that industry, or is it, you know, are they totally duplicative and is the investment, in a sense, uh, sort of a waste of uh, society's money? So there are many, many aspects of uh, 
uh, the issues in terms of the consequences of investments that would have to be uh, looked at or could be looked at in this process, depending on the kind of proposal and the industry you're talking about. So I won't go on any further. The paper lays out uh, more details, but uh, the basic idea is to establish a process for democratic uh, input and uh, to some extent democratic control of how society's money is being spent uh, for its um, interest in the future. One, one question, um, this is Gar again. Uh, again for clarification, you mentioned at the outset we may need a lot more capital to achieve these goals. Do you have in your schema, or could you explain to the folks here, the ways in which capital might be allocated as between different industries and between, uh, how does that work in terms of your model? Yeah, well, that's an excellent uh, question. Um, in a sense, it this model doesn't really go to that issue because that's a bit of a closer step to, you know, I'll use the word central planning, you know, the dirty term, but uh, that that goes a step in the direction of what kinds of mechanisms should be set up to allocate among industries and then have different firms within an industry, you know, make proposals for how to spend that money. Uh, now, presumably, in the scheme I'm talking about, people would have a lot of freedom, corporations would have a lot of freedom to, to raise money for whatever they thought would be productive. But I think, really, there almost has to be a, a separate proposal, a separate layer in society that starts to allocate among industries. That kind of issue is dealt with in another paper I, I wrote that you're familiar with, but um, uh, that goes beyond this proposal. Thank <laughs> you.